bidder dropped down to 7 versus 24 and the latency dropped down from 200 ms on the upload to 25.6 so absolutely outstanding yo what is up everybody welcome back to another youtube video so in this video i'm going to be going over a complete network optimization guide for your computer and for your router and the newest part of this guide is going to be the router part a lot of in-depth research has gone into this and i've actually got a new router to show you guys the complete differences in my internet when it comes to latency buffer blow and jitter so so by getting a new router you can pretty much minimize all of your network latency that is caused by your network itself and then you would only be having just paying latency in general so one of the easiest upgrades is just to upgrade the router and the differences it can make are pretty drastic so i can show you guys an example that i've personally went through so as you can see this is just my old router right here these are buffer blow tests so i got a c on this which is not great whatsoever you want at least an a on this test to ideally play video games without any issues and this is on the old router this is on the new one obviously a massive massive improvement so this was c versus a the download is a little bit lower just due to me doing some manual tuning in the router just to get it to an a out of the box i was getting about a b so with the manual tuning i got it down to an a which is super duper good and you can't really do it on most routers unless you get a very specific one so on this old router i could not manually tune it to get it down to an a and it was just right off the bat horrible as you can see 188 ms on upload active versus zero on the new one and then we can run the second test which was the cloudfare internet test and this shows you a lot of information on your network and as you can see basically we're just going to look at network quality score and the jitter and latency so as you can see network quality score average for video streaming and poor for online gaming and average for video chatting so all three of these is not great and basically i'll be lagging around playing video games which was what what was happening before whenever i would stream i would disconnect for a few seconds or sometimes or the game would just not be running properly so as you can see the jitter is about 23.9 so 24 ms on the spike side and basically you just want this as low as possible you don't want it like that and latency as you can see it spiked up all the way to 200 so not good and if we go to the second test which was with the new router as you can see good great for online gaming which is what you want this is the highest score you can get on this test which is great and great for video chatting so that's what we want and as you can see the jitter dropped down to 7 versus 24 and the latency dropped down from 200 ms on the upload to 25.6 so absolutely outstanding definitely was worth installing the router and upgrading it so if you guys have a bad router which most of you might actually do just because you are running whatever the internet provider gave you 90 percent of the time whatever they give you is trash so run those two tests that i just showed you right here i'll leave links to those tests in the description just run both of them see what you get if it's not like this then i would recommend getting the netduma r3 which is what i am running right right now it's a really good router really good settings and lots of features like geo filter and ping heat map and basically what these features do you can block out certain servers so for example so as you guys can see this is duma os which is the operating system that is on the router and as you can see it just shows you all this information but the specific one that i was talking about is geo filter and basically if you choose your pc and then choose the game that you're playing which is going to be fortnite for me you could pretty much just minimize all the servers servers down to like the ones that are only closest to you and you can either make it so it's all in your state all in the country or all in the continent but basically the lower you go the better usually just because you're able to connect to the closest server but you might not be able to connect to any server at all if there isn't any servers close to you so that's what geofilter is you could do this for other games as well so if i select for example and i could for example choose call of duty press finish as you see it'll pretty much block out any servers that are outside of this red circle now if i go to ping heat map i'll actually be able to see where the servers are depending on the game so let's just do warzone for example and as you can see there's one in texas so i would pretty much go to geo filter and just make sure that the that this server right here is within the red circle as we see it is so i'm only going to be connecting to this one right here any other one i would like these ones in the different states i would not connect to these just because i have the geo filter turned on smart boost is really good as well basically you could prioritize gaming as we see i have it on the top and i could prioritize my PC over all the other devices that are connected to the network which is super good and ping optimizer this basically is what reduces your buffer blow and what reduces your jitter and latency so I actually manually tune this rather than have it optimize it for me but if you want the easy setup you would just click optimize my ping and it will go through the testing for you and figure out what the best settings are but 
But if you do end up getting my ultimate PC optimization service and you do get this router, I will go through all of this and do it manually for you, just like I have it done. And that's basically how I got an A and gray on these tests right here. So if you are interested in buying this router, go to the link in the description. And if you are interested in me setting up your whole computer for low latency gaming, go to the zilly.net link in the description where you can book the ultimate PC optimization service on there. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the router part. And now we're going to move on to whatever you can do within Windows to help all the stuff regarding jitter and regarding latency on your network. So there's going to be two links down in the description and they're going to be dependent on what Ethernet adapter you have. So the easiest way to find out is just open up your task manager, go to performance at the very top, click Ethernet and just read out what the name is. If it's Realtek, then you would go to the Realtek website, which I'll make sure to make that obvious in the description. So it would be this website here. And if it says Intel, it would be this website here. Now, the reason why I'm using this specific Ethernet version for Intel is because the newer ones, for some reason, they bug out the internet adapter for the people that install them. I've had this with clients as well. So the latest version that doesn't bug out your driver and actually leaves you with internet working is this one right here. So go to the either link in the description. If either one don't support your internet adapter, then just search up the name in Google and search up drivers and just download the latest one. So if you have either one of these, so Realtek or Intel, then it's pretty easy. So for Realtek, you just want to go on the website, scroll down, find Windows. And if you're on Windows 11, download the one that says dash, not power saving. Now, if you're on Windows 10, you do the same thing, which is going to be this one right here. So I'm on Windows 10. So I'm going to download this one. Just click the blue icon right here. And it's going to take you to this website, click download file and just type in the captcha. So it's going to be JG9 JVC. And once it's done, just click show in folder. And once you have it downloaded, all you want to do is just right click on it, click extract files, press OK. And you can double click on this and right click on this, click extract files again, press OK, ignore this error, press close and go to this folder and you're going to go to the Windows 10 folder. And this is how you're going to update the Realtek driver without installing the bloatware. So this is a cleaner way to update it. Double clicking this exe is, is going to work, but I just wouldn't recommend it. I would just do it the manual way. So all you want to do is have this open, search up device manager in your search bar and then expand network adapters, find your network adapter that you're updating, which is going to be the Realtek. Right click on it, update driver, browse my computer. And we're just going to copy this right here and we're going to paste it in here and we're going to press next. As you can see, it's installing the drivers for this ethernet adapter. So this is really important. You can do this on Intel and Realtek, but right here is Realtek. I'm going to show you guys how to do it on the Intel here in a second after this is done. All right. So once it's done updating, it will show you if Windows has successfully updated your drivers. Just close out of that. You might not have internet for a second or two and then it'll come back. Then if you're on Intel, you basically just want to download the driver from here and you want to extract it files, press OK, and you want to go in there, find this thing right here with this icon, right click on it, click extract files, press OK. It's also going to give me an error. Just ignore it, press close, and you're going to double click on the folder. You're going to double click Pro 2500. If you're on a 2.5 gig LAN adapter, most of you might be on this one, but most of you are going to also be on a thousand. So try these. If either one doesn't work, then try the other ones. But most of you are going to be on 2500, and then you just double click on that, and then double click NDIS 68, and you would just use these files right here. So you would just copy this, do the same thing that I did with the Realtek, just right click on it, click update drivers and paste this in there. So do that for either 2,500, if that works for a thousand, you would just go in there and do NDIS 68. So you would do that as well. If either one doesn't work for whatever reason, just because you have a weird ethernet adapter, just try double clicking the exe and seeing if that works. If it doesn't, then you need to search up what the name of your ethernet adapter is by going to task manager to search up what this name is and search up drivers and just download the latest one. This is a really important step. You want to be on the latest drivers just because it's going to make like almost a night and day difference depending on what the previous year was. I've seen people that have 2015 drivers on Realtek and updating them to 2024 is a very easy way to improve throughput, buffer blow and all that. So once that's done, you could pretty much now you can go to device manager again. You want to expand network adapters, go to the actual adapter that you use. It's going to be Realtek for me. And we're going to basically go to power management, uncheck everything here, just like so. Go to advanced. You want to disable ARP offload, disable energy efficient ethernet, disable flow control, disable gigabit light, disable green ethernet, interrupt moderation, disable this, IPv4, check some offloading, disable this, large send offload, both of them disable that, maximum number of RSS queues, just max this out to four, and then NS offload, disable this, power saving mode, disable, priority VLAN, set this to priority enable, and then research buffers, max this out. If you don't have a lot of RAM, then just max out at 1024, just go do that. Anything higher is going to use more RAM, then shut down wake 
click on LAN, disable that, and speed and duplex, you can either do auto or just max it out at 1.0 or 2.5, but it doesn't really matter just as long as the speed is actually what you're getting. Then IPv4 checks on offloading, disable both of these, and then transmit buffers, same thing as receive buffers, max these out or set it to 1024 if you don't have a lot of RAM. UDP checks on offload, disable these, wake on magic packet, disable this, and wake on pattern match, disable that, and then WOL and shut down link speed, not speed down, and then you can just press OK. It's going to restart your internet for a second and it's going to come back. So that right there is basically most of the internet adapter settings. And these are going to help a lot with just your throughput in game, just your latency in game, and just how the game feels whenever you do specific things like uploading and downloading certain information. So now we're going to press our Windows key and I. We're going to go to network and internet. You're going to click change adapter options, double click on ethernet, click properties, uncheck everything here except QoS pack scheduler and internet protocol version 4. So once you've done that, you can double click on internet protocol version 4, go to advanced, go to WINS, and then uncheck enable LM host lookup, and then make sure you have disabled net BIOS over TCP slash IP checked, and then press OK, press OK, press OK, close, close out of that. And realistically, that's pretty much all you need to do for Windows in terms of network. Now, most of the stuff that is going to be affecting your internet is going to be router based. And for that, I would recommend getting a new router as soon as possible. And depending on what you have right now, it just depends. So if you have a router from your internet company, you got to replace it. The ones that they give you are complete garbage. So stuff like Spectrum, Xfinity, Comcast, all of that is garbage. If you do a network latency test, it will, it will just get a bad score. Anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, comment down below if you need help or if there's a suggestion that you have and like this video for the YouTube algorithm. But that's going to be pretty much it. Peace out.